All right, so welcome to our first installment of Water Safety Wednesday with Falu and Marie. Um, I use she, her pronouns, Falu. I use him, he pronouns. Awesome, and we're gonna be talking to you guys today about lifeguards and the importance of water safety in regards to lifeguards. I am here with Jasmine. She is a lifelong Prince George's country resident. She began working in aquatics as a lifeguard while in high school in 2014. Jasmine became a full-time aquatics professional in 2014 with the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commissions. Currently, Jasmine Bryant is a certified water safety instructor, lifeguard instructor slash lifeguard instructor trainer, certified pool operator, and as an aquatic faculty operator. Jasmine's favorite part of aquatics are opportunities she got gets to teach people whether it's teaching swim lessons to young kids adults or teaching lifeguarding to teenagers she thoroughly enjoys any opportunities to teach others currently jasmine is a faculty director at theresa banks memorial aquatic center in prince george's community maryland awesome and we also have briley penner Briley began his aquatics career in 2013 while he lived overseas, which provided him an opportunity to coach swimmers from a variety of countries across North America, Europe, Africa, and Asia. It was this experience that led him to pursue a career in swim coaching and aquatics management. Briley firmly believes every person has value and every person deserves an opportunity to succeed. This philosophy drives his vision and also led him to earn a master's in divinity from Carolina University and be a co-founder of the Piedmont Renewal Network. Riley founded Swim Smart North Carolina in 2020 after recognizing a need in the greater triad North Carolina area for more groups committed to preventing drowning and working to provide equitable access to water safety education and programs. Riley is a certified American Red Cross lifeguard instructor and also holds certifications in swim lesson instructing, lifeguarding, and lifeguard instruction from the YMCA of USA. Falu, would you like to start off our question? What is the background associated with being a lifeguard? Um, I can start off. I would say that, you know, my background um, is, you know, I started doing this, you know, in high school. um, And it it really just kind of started off as just a job. You know, my dad turned to my sister and I one day and was like, you know, we're going up to the pool. Sports and learning had just opened up. Um, We had no idea what we were in for. And, you know, it was because he had heard that they were doing lifeguard tests. Um, I ended up passing the class. My sister did not. you know, but, you know, and since then I've been working as a lifeguard, you know, in, in some capacity, whether it's swim lessons, lifeguard instructing, um, or once I became full time um, ever since that day. Yeah. So I actually became a lifeguard because it was required for my uh, swim coaching job that I got. It was my first job in aquatics. Um, having a lifeguard certification was one of the requirements. So I took the class, got certified, and um, I took a job on the side as a lifeguard to make a little extra income for college. Um, And I've just been in that world ever since. Thank you guys for sharing about your background with lifeguarding. Would you just be able to describe the difference between lifeguarding at a beach versus a pool and what experiences of those you have? Sure, um, and I can kind of start here. Um, so number one, I've, I've always only worked um, in pool environments. Um, I think maybe once or twice um, for like a party or something, um, you know, somebody was looking for a lifeguard and at a beach and I did that. Um, but. I would say primarily just working at pools. And and I would say the main thing is at a pool, you can always see what's on the bottom. You can always see what's around you. Um, Whereas if you go to a beach, there's gonna be certain things you have to worry about that you don't have to worry about at a pool. Um, Being able to see rocks and stuff at the bottom that you may jump in on, um, that's not gonna be as big of a problem at a swimming pool. You can see directly on the bottom. Um, And also just the, presence of aquatic life, um, whether it be, you know, different snakes or anything like that. Um, At swimming pools, you don't have to worry about that too much. Yeah, I've actually not had the opportunity to lifeguard on the beach before. I've only done pools, Um, but I think Jasmine hit on a lot of it. The only thing I would add is that in a pool, you don't have to worry about currents. Um, You know, I think a lot of people have gone to water parks where they've got the big wave pools and the waves come and jump over you. But even then you can still see all the way to the bottom. It's still pretty safe, but on a beach, lifeguards can't see the bottom, like Jasmine said, and they also have to be aware of 
you know, what the water's doing, where is it taking people? Because if somebody gets caught in a rip current, you know, they blink and they're 200 yards out into the middle of the ocean and they don't know what to do sometimes. I am a lifeguard. Yeah. Why did you want to become a lifeguard? So I wanted to become a lifeguard mainly because of a job requirement. Um, I began uh, coaching for my summer team and so I needed to get lifeguard trained. But then when I came to college, there was a job opportunity as a lifeguard and that became a way to fulfill my work study, but also be around my team and my coach and around the pool more often. Are we answering this question too? <laughs> no. Okay. You're next. Why should someone swim in a lifeguard area? You know, my big thing is nobody knows ahead of time that they're going to have an emergency. Nobody wakes up in the morning at 11, 12 o'clock and says, hey, I'm going to have a uh, an emergency later on today. So you want that lifeguard there in case uh, the worst case scenario happens, in case there's an injury that you didn't see coming, um, that you aren't taking necessarily all the safety steps and there's a minor injury, or you are taking all the safety steps and something minor happens you want that lifeguard there to assist just in case you can't assist yourself yeah i i think she hit it, it things can happen anywhere and they can happen to anyone um over the last couple of years i've seen news stories of high level division one college swimmers drowning um and you know when you think about who is most likely to drown you don't think a Kathleen Baker or a Katie Ledecky, but those are the same kinds of people that it's happened to. So when you swim in a lifeguarded area, like Jasmine said, they're trained to recognize and prevent emergencies and to respond. So they, they help keep you safe. Do you guys have any examples to share about how swimming and swimming abilities made you guys a stronger lifeguard or someone else a stronger lifeguard? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, there was a guy in one of my lifeguard classes last year um he passed all the swim requirements he he learned all the skills he worked really hard in the course and he passed the course um but his kick was really weak i mean we're talking like borderline some people might not have passed him weak um but he worked really hard through the course and he really wanted to do well and he did well enough that we actually hired him at the facility I was working at and he committed over the next couple of weeks and months to getting in the water regularly to work on his kick and his kick became so strong that he actually became one of the best lifeguards on our staff. Awesome. Oh. Um, and I would say I had a similar experience, you know, just it was with me, you know, um, I did not come from um, the background of swimming on a swim team growing up, you know, um, so when I took the lifeguard class and it was a struggle, um, it, you know, it was something where, you know, I committed myself uh, to getting better at it, you know, and the management team that I worked for, you know, they saw the work that I was putting in and that's really what opened up the, the doors and opportunities for me to get into teaching swim lessons, you know, um, to get into teaching lifeguarding is, you know, they saw, you know, how hard I was willing to work to improve in an area and they knew that that would translate into other areas as well. Do you guys have any examples on how your lifeguarding experience was helpful? I would say for me, um, and I did just, you know, kind of touch a little bit on this, is it's just opened up so many doors um, for me. Um, at a time in my life when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do as a career, um, you know, me being as strong as a lifeguard as I was, or am, um, you know, getting the opportunity to teach swim lessons and, and other things um, really gave me the, put me on the path to be able to do what I do today, you know? Um, so for me, this isn't just a career. It's not just a job anymore. Um, it, it's something that I really enjoy doing. I really enjoy, um, you know, providing programs for the community. Um, you know, the drowning rates in our community is a lot higher than other communities. And, and this is a really good way for me to give back. Yeah, I think for me, being a lifeguard actually helped me personally. Um, it helped my people skills and helped my communication skills. Um, when you are in that lifeguard, our class, you're trained on how to work as a team, how to respond to emergencies as a team. So I had to learn how to communicate with my teammates, um, telling them exactly what I'm doing and telling them exactly what they, I need them to be doing. And they were telling me the same. 
um, it, it really goes a long way in making you a, a more confident communicator. And then personally, um, it helped my people skills because, you know, candidly, if people don't trust you and they don't like you, you're not going to be a very good lifeguard because your job is to be around people and to help keep them safe. So if they don't trust you, it's hard to keep them safe. So I, I had to learn to interact with people in a way that, you know, made them trust me. Because if I had to tell them that something they were doing is unsafe and why it's unsafe and why you shouldn't do it, hopefully they have enough trust and respect for me that they're gonna stop that potentially dangerous behavior. Mm -hmm. Well, we have just one more question and this is mostly for people that are probably gonna be watching this video and are interested in lifeguarding. And that is what are some of the requirements for lifeguarding that you guys can remember? So some of the more technical aspects um, are there's going to be a lifeguarding course that's roughly 29 hours, um, give or take a few minutes. Um, in order to qualify for that course, you have to be able to swim 300 yards continuously. Um, you have to tread water for two minutes without using your hands. And then you have to retrieve a 10 pound submerged object from 20 yards out in under a minute and 40 seconds. Yeah, and I would also add that it's not a, a technical aspect, but it's more of a, a personal trait. Um, you have to um, do well under pressure. Um, as a lifeguard, how fast you recognize and respond to an emergency really determines how severe that emergency could be. Um, it, it could be nothing, but it could be something. And, and somebody could even potentially lose their life if you don't do your job efficiently. So responding well unto, under pressure is very important for lifeguards. All right, well, that's all the questions we have for you guys. Um, thank you both so much for meeting with us and answering our questions and being really honest about the whole lifeguarding process. Um, we wanna remind everyone watching that International Water Safety Day is on May 15th. So please sign up for that. You can look at treadathon.org and look at the world's largest tread. We're trying to break the Guinness World Record for the most people treading at once. So please sign up, please reach out to us and um, stay tuned for our, our next Water Safety Wednesday. Thanks guys. All right. Yeah.